Hi friends, in this video, specific energy consumption will be discussed. So, what is meant by specific energy consumption and how it will be calculated and what is the significance of it and also what are the factors affecting this specific energy consumption. Let us see first the definition of specific energy consumption. This is the definition. So, it is the energy consumed in watts per ton kilometers of train. That means it is the energy consumption in watts. So, we need to get energy in watts. That means we have already found the tractive effort. That means it is the force exerted by the driving wheel on rails. That means it is a one kind of force. Now, this is energy. How can we get the energy? Energy is the work done per time. That means now we need to find the work done. How work done will come? Work done is equal to force into distance or displacement. So here we can find the force in, as tractive effort. We can take the tractive effort as the force and the distance as the distance. So if we multiply these two and divided by time we will get the energy consumption and but here it is specific energy consumption that means we need to divide the same thing with ton kilometers that means ton means it's the mass and kilometers is the again it's the distance so we need to divide the same with the mass and distance here weight and distance okay that's the overall concept with this definition only we can get these observations. Let us go ahead with further study, maybe with elaborated study of what we have discussed till now. The procedure is like this. So, we need to find the total energy and it is the sum of product of tractive effort and the distance for a particular case. First, we have we need to take a case and in that case, we need to find the tractive effort for each and every cases what we have found the tractive efforts and that will be discussed after this tractive effort we have already discussed there are four types we need to overcome four types so four types of tractive efforts are there but here also we need to consider all those types and we need to see the energy consumption in each and every tractive effort, tractive effort case and that will be summed up at the end as how we have summed up for the tractive effort and here also we need to sum up the total energy and then we need to divide the same with weight and the distance so that we will get the specific energy consumption. So up to this point it is very clear we need to find the total energy which is sum of product of tractive effort and the distance. Next, once the specific energy, so this is the total energy. Now we need to see the specific energy. So what is specific energy means? It is the ratio of total energy to the weight of the train and the distance traveled. So what we have observed in the definition itself. It is the watts per ton kilometers. That means divided by weight distance. First, find out the specific energy of the driving wheel. Here, we need to find the specific energy of driving wheel. So, what by using those two cases, and then this will be divided by the overall efficiency of transmission gear and the motor to get specific energy consumption. So, this is the whole thing specific energy consumption that is different, and specific energy is different. So, specific energy consumption means this is the specific energy divided by the overall efficiency. I mean, overall efficiency of transmission gear and the motor. This part we have already discussed. So, overall efficiency in this part we have already discussed in the mechanics of train movement. So, this part is now here. We need to take it. 
let us see how these things will happen yeah first we need to find total energy output for this the total energy output of driving axle is spent as follows so we need to overcome three things so one is to accelerate the train second one is to overcome the gradient third one is to overcome the train resistance including the curve resistance so we have already completed tractive effort class and in that class we have discussed all these points so tractive effort required to accelerate the train to overcome the gradient to overcome the train resistance and to overcome the curve resistance and here the train resistance is taken including the curve resistance so finally there are three cases we need to discuss so let us see let us move on to the first case which is accelerate the train how much energy is required to accelerate the train let us see this part yeah this is energy output of driving axle to accelerate the train i have taken trapezoidal speed time curve and uh, that is assume here so this component is ea which is equal to fa and distance oad so oad is the distance in trapezoidal speed time curve so we will we'll see the trapezoidal speed time curve here that will be added here so in that diagram we can easily identify oad and that distance is required here that means up to oad that part comes under acceleration so fa is the tractive effort for to accelerate the train and that is substituted here 277.8 we into alpha and the distance oad is the area of the triangle that is of into this is height vm into 1000 divided by 3600 as vm is the vm is in kilometer per hour so i need to convert it into meter per second that means into 1000 divided by 3600 into vm by alpha is the time that is t1 so we have already discussed this part in speed time curve t1 is equal to vm by alpha so i have taken that part that means we can call this as the the base vm by alpha is the base and this vm into 1000 by 3600 is the height so of base into height so this is the formula for a triangle so it's very simple multiplication of tractive effort and this distance or the area of the triangle and that will be in watt second so i need to convert into watt hour so i need to divide the same with 3600 so definitely i have divided with 3600 so the final value will be 0.01072 vm square we into we watt hour so this is the final expression of energy output of the driving axle to accelerate the train now let us move move on to next part and this is to accelerate the train so the next part will be to overcome the gradient so how the energy output will be to overcome the gradient and that will be taken as ez as usual it is simply force into displacement or distance where d1 is the distance over which power remains on so this is the criteria for this d1 is the distance over which power remains on and its value is the area of oabe in that diagram and next coming to here i need to take the tractive effort of the gradient and that was already discussed it's 9.81 capital w capital g into 1000 d1 where 1000 is for need to convert from kilometer to meter so it's 1000 d1 and coming in that will be in joules or watt second and i need to convert into watt hour so it will be divided into 3600 so finally the value will be 2.725 w g d1 watt hour 
this is also converted into water and this is called EZ so the output energy output of driving axle to overcome the gradient and the third part will be to overcome the train resistance including the curve resistance let us see this part also this part is termed as capital ER and ER is equal to multiplication of FR into D1 here also I need to take the distance D1 only and FR is as usual FR is the tractive effort to overcome the train resistance so it will be capital W R D1 into 1000 divided by 3600 watt hour okay we have already discussed why 1000 comes and why 3600 comes finally the value will be 0 0.2778 WR D1 water. So as we have discussed the procedure, so the energy output has been taken. Now we need to add all energies. So these energies are the comes un under total energy. Let me see what is the total energy. So the total energy output of driving axles is the sum of all the three energies in water the unit is very important so obviously e is equal to e is the total energy and that will be 0 0.01072 vm square we plus or minus 2.725 wg d1 plus 2.778 wr d1 all are in water and the plus or minus comes for up gradient plus come for up gradient and minus for down gradient so that is because of gradient so that is plus or minus comes now according to procedure this step is over now I need to find specific energy specific energy means energy should be divided by watt and distance I mean mass into distance so this is the part specific energy output is equal to capital E divided by WD. If we do the same, it, it comes like that 0.01072 Vm square WE divided by W capital D. Here W is the effective weight and W is the W. Effective weight may be taken as 1.1 W also plus or minus 2.725 capital G D1 by D as if I divide this with WD WW will cancel out so the this thing will remains plus 0 0.2778 R D1 by D and this will be what R per ton kilometer so the unit is very very important and it's very easy to remember also if you can define specific energy also it's very simple it's defined as the specific energy specific energy output means the energy in water per ton kilometers very simple if you know the unit next what is meant by specific energy consumption that means specific energy consumption is equal to specific energy output at driving axle divided by overall efficiency of transmission gear and motor okay it's very simple the specific energy output is the above one and that will be divided with efficiency okay very simple concept specific energy consumption now let us see the factors affecting the specific energy consumption so what are the different factors that affect specific energy consumption let us see the first one distance between the stops what happened if the distance between the stops is more or less okay yeah first greater the distance between the stops less will be the specific energy consumption let us see why why it will be if the distance is more distance between the stops is more let me see the uh, formula okay let's go back to formula if the distance is more we see that specific energy consumption is directly proportional to specific energy output with the last formula and the previous formula specific energy output is equal to E divided by WD 
where capital D is the distance between the stations. So as the distance between the stations increases, the denominator in that fraction increases. As the denominator increases, the actual thing is reduces. So specific energy consumption is less if the distance between the distance between the stops increases. Yeah, typical value of specific energy consumptions are for suburban station it is 50 to 70 water per ton kilometers. For mainline service it is 18 to 31 water per ton kilometer. So these are the typical values and uh, they are practically taken values. Coming to the next factor it is retardation and acceleration values. How these things will affect the specific energy consumption? For a given scheduled speed, for a given scheduled speed, that means speed has been given greater the value of acceleration and retardation. What will happen? If the acceleration and retardation values are more, especially for retardation value, if it is more, that means the distance covered under under when the train is the supply is on will be reduced because the retardation is more as the retardation is more and the specific speed is constant the distance covered under supply is on is reduced that means d1 will be reduced but in the formula if you see the formula d1 will be in the numerator so what happened as the numerator decreases specific energy consumption will reduce okay so let us see the facts more will be the coasting period as retardation is more the coasting period will be more less the period during which power is on coasting means obviously the power thing power should be off as we have already discussed in speed time curve so as the coasting period is more because of the retardation is more the coasting period is more as the coasting period is more the period during which the power power is on is less so d1 will be small d1 means that only you know d1 means it's a distance covered up to when the power is on so it's it is small as this is small the specific energy consumption will be less because d1 is in the numerator next the next point is gradient if the steep gradient will naturally involve more energy consumption that everyone will know even though the re regenerative braking is employed okay regenerative braking is employed still the steep gradient have to we need to put more energy consumption next the train resistance more the train resistance greater will be the specific energy consumption this is also natural okay as the train resistance is more we need to apply more energy so the consumption will be definitely more so type of and we can also see the same thing specific energy consumption specific energy means the energy divided by weight and distance so as the weight is more the train resistance is more so definitely specific energy consumption will be more so typical type of train equipment so greater the overall efficiency less will be the efficient specific energy consumption type of train equipment so if we take the train equipment such that if the overall efficiency is more then the specific energy consumption will, will be less as we know overall efficiency is in the denominator of that specific energy consumption factor so if overall efficiency is more specific energy consumption will be less so these are the factors affecting specific energy consumption so this is the video for specific energy consumption we have discussed the definition of specific energy consumption procedure to get the specific energy consumption and the calculation of derivations of specific energy consumption and finally the factors affecting specific energy consumption so thank you so much for 2000 plus subscriptions and the channel is going very nicely and we have crossed 3 lakh views now 
and one of our videos crossed 1 lakh views also thank you so much for your cooperation if you like this video please like it if you want to share this video please share with your friends and family and if you haven't subscribed till date kindly subscribe so that i can finish all this utilization within one month also and please press the bell button so that you will get the notification whenever i upload any video thank you thank you so much